Hello, in this segment we're going to cover removing the rear brake rotors. As anytime you, you do work on the brake system, if you replace the brake pads, you need to have the rotors checked, machined, and or replaced if necessary. And um, just about any parts house, local parts houses can do this. Um, they have machine shop services. If you call in advance and set up a time, you can usually drop them off. They can do them on the spot. It can be done anywhere 15 to 30 minutes, you know, just depending on the type of equipment they use. It can be done relatively quickly, um, so it doesn't have to put a major delay on your repair project. Um, but it is something that's necessary to have done, and very few individuals would own their own brake plate. Basically what they're going to do is take a caliper measuring device, and they're going to find the grooves on here from the wear, and they're going to go to the narrowest groove or the deepest groove and measure the thickness of that rotor at the deepest groove. And if the thickness of the rotor is within the operating tolerances of thickness um, design for the specifications of the rotor, they'll go ahead and machine it down to where it's perfectly smooth and they always have to go as far as the deepest groove. So that's where they'll measure it at to determine the rotor serviceability. If it's ground down to the point where it can't be turned down safely um, and still within its tolerances, then you'll have to replace the rotor. And what happens is you see the thickness of the rotor. As the, the rotor wears down from the friction being applied to it, um, it becomes narrower and narrower. And they have to maintain a minimal thickness in order for it to dissipate the heat that's built up from braking correctly and prevent the rotor from warping. Also, the piston and caliper assembly is designed to certain specifications. As the rotor wears out, the pads themselves have to go further and further together and closer together. That makes the piston come out further and further inside the caliper. It can only come out to a certain point before it doesn't have enough surface area to seal anymore or maintain its integrity from twisting. And that's the reason for the minimum thicknesses are. And if it's machined down beyond that, or you neglect or don't take it in and have it machined and it wears down beyond that point, it can get to a point of safety where the, the piston and the caliper push it out so far to keep that contact that it, it can't stabilize itself in an emergency braking situation or with a brake applied, the piston can bind and cause the brake system to lock up or fail and lose pressure. Either way, it's extremely hazardous and bad situation. So it's, it's really important to keep the, the rotors within their serviceable, toler excuse me, serviceable tolerance levels. And each time you replace them, put new pads on, they're remachined so they're perfectly smooth again and flat. Um, Rotors and metal is actually a real porous surface if you just look at it magnified several times. Um, the other things that happen is the friction compounds used in, in the brake pads are being embedded into the surface of the rotor and that causes a glazing action to occur and it, it decreases the braking friction that can be applied between the brake pad and the rotor and um, causes more heat and reduced braking. So that's why it's important for you to keep the rotors service when you do the pads, make sure that they're checked and machined as necessary. Um, for the training video, we're just going to go ahead and reassemble at this point so we don't have a loss in time and a delay in, in, in the um, training process. In this segment, um, I just explained to you the various uh, um, uh, reasons that you need to machine your rotors um, and the procedure for doing that. So watch our next segment and we'll cover removing the rotors.